Hey y'all, happy Tuesday, happy spoken word Tuesday. I hope you guys there is coming along fine. Anyway, you guys know on Tuesdays, I like to bring you guys the word, right? Um, and um, earlier, I read um, my short from the Wisdom of Solomon. I pray to the Most High. <laughs> I like my shirt. Anyway, um, okay, from the Wisdom of Solomon, from, um, you know, um, the Apocrypha, one of the books we moved from the Bible, right? Um, and it reads as follows. Um, oh, verse 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin, okay? So, again, it's just like it says, right? Like it says, right? You know, um, if you possess a malicious soul, then you should not think that you possess wisdom. Wisdom do not enter malicious, soul, malicious, malicious souls, right? Or souls that are subject unto sin, right? Of course, we all fall short in the glory, and we all sin, right? But when we know better, we do better, okay? So, so when the father see you trying to confess and, you know, get out that mali those malicious ways, then, you know, he will start allowing you to gain wisdom, right? All right. So anyway, you guys, I will be reading the wisdom of Solomon, you know, um, chapter one. Okay. From the park for, of course, one of the books we move follows, right? Um, of course, this short also comes from the lesson I'll be doing today. All right. So wisdom of Solomon. Um, this is actually a, a short chapter. They only have 16 verses. Okay. But you guys know I like to break it down so you guys can get the full understanding, okay? And let me see. Let me move this scarf a little bit more. You know, bring it back. Woo-hoo! Okay. Okay. I think that's right. Let's get ready. Woo-hoo! Oh. Okay. All right. So, chapter 1, verse 1. The Wisdom of Solomon. Love righteousness. Ye that be judges of the earth, think of the Lord with a good heart and in simplicity of heart, seek him, right? So he's saying just love righteousness, right? Because we be the judges of the earth. Israel be the judges of, of the earth, right? So we got to love righteousness, all right? So we can judge, right, right? Also, he's saying um, with, judge with a good heart, right? And, and with simplicity. Be simple, right? Simplicity. With simplicity, seek the Father, Okay. Verse 2, for he will be found of them that tempt him not and showed himself unto such as do not distrust him, right? So the father only revealing himself, right, and found to those who's not tempting him, who is inviting him, who is letting him in, right, you know, um, and to those who don't distrust him. So the father is dead of those who don't trust, who, who, who don't distrust him, no, those who trust the father, the father is there with them. They have opened up and allowed him to come in. They have invited the father into their life because they trust the father, okay? And um, he they tempt the father not, okay? All right, verse three. For frown with thought separate from God and his power when it is tried, reprove it to unwise. So again, um, wisdom do not enter into malicious souls, right? So it, it says, for frown with thoughts separate from God. So if you got these malicious thoughts or these frown with thoughts, then it separates you from the Father anyway, right? And his power, when it is tried, when you try to try the Father with your malicious ways, right? He reprove it. He reprove you and you are unwise. He reprove it, be unwise, okay? Verse 4, which is my short I read. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So we know, you know, if you malicious and although you're on top of the world, don't think that you possess wisdom because you don't possess wisdom. You know, you got that position maliciously deceiving people, manipulating people or crossing people over, stepping over their backs to get that position. That was done maliciously, right? So there is no wisdom. So you might be on top of the world in that position, right? But you did not get it by wisdom. Therefore, you should perish. All right. Verse five. For the Holy Spirit of this of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So you see, so for the Holy Spirit of discipline for, of deceit, right? It, it flees away from it, right? So um, if you have these deceiving ways, the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee from you, okay? So if you think you're holy and you deceitful, no, 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 no. There is nothing about holy and deceitful mixing with one another, okay? Um, 
And also, the Holy Spirit removes himself from thoughts that are without understanding. So even if you don't even understand what's going on, right? You know, being ignorant of the fact. The Holy Spirit is also fleeing from you, okay? And it will not abide when unrighteous cometh in. So if you already got the Holy Spirit and you decide to go backslide or go do things malicious and deceitful or do things that's against the Holy Spirit, right? Then it will not abide in you, right? You know, it leaves, okay? It don't abide, it disappears, okay? All right, so as you see my scarf, let me put this back on one more time. You know, these stuff things always kind of like come to loose and stuff. Good gracious. Let me do this one more time, okay? Because the bad bad silk or somebody slides for some reason. <laughs> Try it one more time. A little bit more tighter. Okay. Okay. Um, num um uh, verse six. For wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquit a blasphemer or of his words. For God is witness of his reigns and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. So he hear what he say. You know, we speak a lot. Everybody talk, they talk, 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 but don't walk the walk. So the father hear his tongue on how he's speaking, right? Now, just know that wisdom is a loving spirit. So, of course, it can't mix with unholiness. It can't mix with deception and manipulation and all that or backstabbing and unstableness. Of course, it doesn't mix with that because it's a loving spirit, right? And it will not acquit a blasphemer of his words, right? So, although you may think you wise, you're blaspheming the words. No, no, no. You're not getting acquitted. You're getting judged for that. Okay, um, for God is the witness of his reigns, right? He a witness of his works, right? What he put out or and what he's telling you guys to do, his blueprint. He's a witness of it, okay? And um a true and um a true beholder of his heart, right? And a hearer of his tongue. So yeah, don't he say it matters with the heart because our heart, um, what we do with our heart, you know, it is it's really gonna give us life or death, right? Um, hell or heaven, right? Eternal life or damnation, right? Damnation depends on, you know, the commitments through our heart. It depends, right? So as the father said that, um, he is a true beholder of his heart and the hearer of his tongue. So he, he know what he says. He hear what he says and he practices what he says, right? So you notice people that, oh, I love the father with their tongue, but they far from away from the father with their heart. So he's a true beholder of his heart and he's a hearer of his tongue. Okay. All right, verse 7. For the Spirit of the Lord filleth the world, and that which containeth all things had knowledge of the voice. So, yes, the Spirit of the world, the Spirit of the Lord filleth the world. Sometimes the Spirit is not here. Sometimes it's scarce. But right now, it's like the Spirit is coming back. The Spirit of Yahweh is coming back, you know, so he can uplift Judah, uplift us, right? So we can lead other nations by the, with the guidance of the Father through his Son, okay? So, uh, for the Spirit of the Lord filleth the world, it is being field right we are rising right we are starting to take our places because believe you and me or not we were we was we were sleep we had no understanding now knowledge you know is is coming to and fro or running to and fro is there we are the knowledge knowledge is power okay um okay so for the spirit of the lord filleth the world and that which containing all his things had knowledge of the voice so any anything or any person or any anything, any living thing, you know, um that that contain it, you know, um his spirit, you know, uh have knowledge of his voice. Okay? Verse 8. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid, neither shall vengeance when they punish him pass by him. So you see, the unrighteous who speak unrighteous things, they can't be hid. So all that malicious thing, you know, will be venged upon, right? By the father. Um, okay, he will be judged, okay, so he cannot hide, he cannot hide the vengeance, right, you know, he can't hide the punishment, it will not pass him, it will come right to him, it will be judged, okay, um, and will punish, right, um, because he speak on righteous things that neither can be hid, right, but will be avenged and punished, okay, when he's visited with the judgment of the father. Verse 9, for inquisitions shall be made into the counsel of, of the ungodly, and the sound of his words shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. So inquisitions, inquiries, shall be made into the counsel of the godly. So judgment, inquiries, your deeds, you know, um, will be will be inquisition. You know, when it's time for judgment, he will inquire about your deeds that you've done on earth, okay? And the sound of the words shall 
come unto the Lord. All the witnesses, all the earth, all everything, the manifestation of what you've done is manifesting this earth and every living thing, even the plants, the, the, the uh, animals, the world is going to judge you, right, of your wicked deeds. So everything should be made manifest to the Father, okay, um, of his wicked deeds. Verse 10, for the ear of jealousy heareth all things, and the noise of murmurings is not hid, hid, right? So the ear of jealousy, because trust and believe me, uh, it hears all things, right? And the noise of the murmurings is not here, is not hid. That murmuring it shows, even that body language shows when you murmuring. So their jealousy is not here, or your murmuring, uh, murmuring, okay, is not here. Verse 11, therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting. For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, and the mouth that believe it slayeth the soul. Okay? So again, beware of your murmuring, right? There's no profit in that, right? <laughs> it's going to come back uh, unto you, right? You know, it's not profitable, right? So refrain your tongues from backbiting and backstable and unstableness, right? You know, for there is no word a secret, right? Don't be uh, using your tongue for things because what's in the dark going to come out to the light, right? For there is no word a secret that should go for naught, right? Naught is nothing. That word you use not be secret. You will be judged. Don't think it's going to go past for nothing, right? For naught. Because it will be heard. It will not be hid. It's not profitable to you, right? Okay? And um, and the mouth that be lieth led the soul. So the mouth that be lieth, the mouth that does the murmuring and the backbiting and all this stuff, the unstable mouth led the soul. Sled his soul and or sled her soul and also bring about slam other people's souls with their malicious ways. Okay? All right, verse 12. Seek not death in the error of your life. And pour not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. So he's saying, seek not death. Because you've done something wrong. Remember I told y'all to go cry it out. Remember over the weekend, I said, let's have a crying joyful mess unto the Father. Don't try to, you know, um... Don't, don't seek death. Remember I said that story when you, I was going so much hard, I tried to salt to take my life. My daddy was right there like, baby, why did you do that? You know, it's because you be thinking when you're young, you know, you're doing so much, nothing's getting right, everything's going wrong. You really don't have, you know, um, the system is really oppressing you, so you only can do things in a limited nature. You know, they don't, you know, um, as Israel, you know, we, even though, although we have the right of free agency, but not in these certain nations, they take that liberty away from you. They take that freedom away from you. So therefore you only can live within their means. So it causes you to be depressed or stressed out and everything. And then you've done all these things to make it and you fall. And now you feel bad trying to take your own life because you feel like you, you got an error in your life or you didn't get to that point you worked so hard for, right? So the father says, seek not death in the era of your life, right? And pour not upon yourself destruction with the words of your hands. Don't, don't destruct yourself just because it happened, right? But just stand up, stand strong, pray, move forward, have faith. It will happen, right? Nothing stays the same. Things change, right? So don't don't think that it's low to to know or, or to believe that when the father come back, all that unrighteous, um, all these nations that's doing us in, it, it's not going away. Oh, he's taking them away. He's going to reverse it so we can have everlasting uh, life, great wisdom, and none of that wickedness. All those wicked people will be gone. So our time is returning. Okay, so don't ever in your life think because you did things in your life and it didn't go your way. Now you now you match yourself. Now you want to kill yourself or you aim with yourself. So now you're destructing yourself all because you feel like a loser or somebody with low self-esteem or somebody just weak and feeble. Nope, 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 nope. Don't think that right now we got all these options. All these things going against our liberty, oppressing us and keeping us down. They're only giving us things to do limited. We cannot explore like we want to explore until Shiloh until the Messiah come back through the Father, okay? But it will happen. Might not be in my generation, in your generation, but guess what we're preparing our generations for? Our seeds. We're getting them ready to be the kings and the queens, right? To take back rightfully what's ours, okay? And to lead in righteousness. Okay, verse 13. For God made not death, neither had he pleasure in the destruction of the living. <laughs> so you see, God made not death. Of course, we bring death to ourselves. Remember, he wants us to live eternally. But death comes to us from our decisions, from our works that we put out in life. So we bring death upon ourselves. So God saying that he made not death. So if he didn't make death, who made death? We made death. We made death based on our decisions and what we do throughout our life, right? So he said... 
Neither had he pleasure in destruction of the living, right? You think he get off or feel good by us killing one another or everybody doing the wicked or feeding the poor doing this? He don't have no pleasure in watching the destruction, but it's because of us, our own ways that's causing our own destruction. He don't have pleasure, right? If it was up to him, he want us to seek him so he can protect us all and win every journey that we go on. But because we stuck in these worldly pleasures and worry about this pleasure and trying to be some, be that or be the woman to be the man or be the powerful of everything, that causes us to betray people, belittle people, belittle people, backstab people, maliciously do things, people, so we can keep that power, which in turn causes us destructive, um, causes us to destruct others. And yet, the father don't take pleasure in watching us destruct, destructing one another, right? Okay, verse um, number fourteen. For he created all things that they might have their being, and the generations of the world were healthful. And there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. Okay? For the right for righteous is immortal, but ungodly men with their works and words call it to them. For when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to know and made a covenant with it, because they are ready to take a part with it. So he's, he's basically saying everything that's going on is because of you he didn't make no poison there so again it said for he created all things that they might have their being he created us remember he said it was a very good thing doing in genesis what he made was good you know he saw all the things he made was good so he he created you know um all things that they might have their being they might have their meanings whatever they want to do with them okay and the generations of the world were helpful we was all helpful you know, big, tall, strong, warlike figures, right? Especially during the time of Prince Abraham. I mean, reading the pillar of fire about the Egypt, it tells me that Prince Abraham was a warrior and couldn't be stopped, okay? He was a warrior. He was a Syrian. He had these warlike figures, a warlike fire, you know, this warlike body. Him and all his people, they was warriors, right? And then he said that the Prime Minister Joseph, well, the book said that the Prime Minister Joseph had great counsel and wisdom. So the Pharaoh's men was actually fearful of the Hebrews because of their warlike statue and their counsel because they felt like they can get up people, other people's minds and um, allow them to counsel them, which is true. And that's why when... Um, what is that? I think that was Hitler said. The great thing he's feared is us coming together because he know we possess warlike figures with fire. We possess great counsel and everything. And when we speak it, we speak it into existence. So they scared for us to unify because they know we come together. Remember, we are strong human beings with warlike, muscle-bound people, right? Strong and tall. And everything. people look at that like, look at them big, tall, masculine black men, right? And then also they call us manipulative because we can speak we know how to provide counsel to get people to understand and that's why Pharaoh Ramses was scared they was trying to keep us down and they were still scared like man to this day they still trying to come up to this day we are rising right Pharaoh Ramses said exactly the right thing he said to this day and this was the old 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 book you guys he said to this day the Hebrews are still trying to rise and come against us. So we keep them. We keep them oppressed. And we keep them with nothing but labor. So all they can do is work, 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 work. So they cannot come together and put their spirits together so they can rise. He said we do everything so their spirits won't live. <laughs> and, and, and do that remind you all of something? Is it now? Is it not happening today? Is it not happening today? Think about that. Okay? All right. So... Again, that they might have their being and the generations of the world were helpful. They was all helpful. And there was no poison of destruction in them. There was no poison of destruction in them. And nor the king of death was upon the earth. You brought it to ourselves. Let me read that verse again. For he created all things that they might have their being. And the generations of the world were helpful. And there was no poison of destruction in them. Nor the king of death upon the earth. For righteous is immortal. Righteousness. For righteousness is immortal. Do you guys see? Being righteous, doing the right thing, living for the Father. Learn like this is your blueprint, okay? The Bible, the pocket show blueprint. So it teaches you how to live. If you follow these guidelines, then what? Righteousness is immortal. You become immortal. You can't be touched, dear. Remember, because knowledge is power. Um, and, um, ver well, 15, verse 15, for righteousness is mortal. And verse 16, the final verse, which I already read, I read again. 
but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. For when they thought to have it their friends, so remember, ungodly men with their works, with their malicious ways and words, with their tongues and everything, called it to them. They decided to consume themselves in that type of life, in their works and they un, um in their wicked ways, right? For when they thought to have it their friend, they made wickedness unrighteous ungodly men made wickedness and unrighteousness right the works of their hands the the uh the speech coming out of their mouth they made it a friend to them and it allowed that friend to consume them to naught to nothing right so all they think they something they're really nothing right and they made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. So they made a covenant with unrighteousness. They worked to their hands and all that, the malicious stuff. They made a covenant, you know, um, with that. They made it to be their friend, right? And didn't think that it was not, that it wasn't going to consume them to no, to nothing, right? But they were worthy to be consumed to no, because they decided to take a part in it, right? So again, but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. For when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to know and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. Because ungodly men, you are worthy to take part, you know, um, with the consumption of naught. Uh, is that it? Oh my goodness. I'm going to scarf and fell on down, right? All right, you guys. I'm done reading now, okay? So... All right, you guys. So again, that was wisdom of Solomon, chapter one, uh, from the Apocrypha. Okay. Um, so I will be going through um certain books, the wisdom of Solomon and Ecclesiastes, because you guys need some understanding, some words of wisdom. I mean, parables he did here. I mean, the father allowed me to break down these parables. So okay, he allowed me, you know, to break down these mysteries of the histories pertaining to him, his fathers, and my ancestors, right, so I'm able to break it down, you know, so I, I thank the father for, um, seeing me worthy enough to edify you guys, okay, so I will be reading Wisdom of Solomon and Ecclesiastes for some time, because I need to get these words put out of wisdom, right, okay, because knowledge is power, all right, you guys, again, happy Tuesday, happy Spoken Word Tuesday, and, um, I hope these lessons are bringing you guys some understanding and classification because even if you don't understand, the Holy Spirit flees from you, okay? And remember, righteousness is immortal. All praise to the Most High, you guys. Bye now. Peace. Love y'all.